call us to order at 637. Pat, I'm going to assume you can hear us. Apologies if you can't. Uh, public comment. Uh, I see no, uh, oh, she may just have, she may just be struggling to connect. She looks like she tried to reconnect audio. Um, but I, it is safe to say that, uh, thank you for making it, Nathan, but uh, no other members of the public are joining us. And uh, no member of the public is outreach to one of our co-directors to bring topic to our attention no no thank you um next up is uh reviewing the draft minutes of october 24th yeah it does look like pat's having some trouble yay pat <laughs> let me let me uh welcome you and apologize I, as soon as your name flashed on you actually make us a quorum so I did call us to order and did we went we've already done public comments. It's quiet in public comment land. So you're um we are we are up and running, much appreciated. Um we're actually at the point where we're gonna review the draft minutes of October 24th. And um so we'll all go quiet for a moment and uh check them out. Uh, see if there's any uh, fixes needed. And uh, everyone should have those draft minutes, either either part of the PDF packet or it's a standalone word. Well, I guess it's a Google Doc. Um, for us to look at. And uh, Chad, just much appreciated on the just the formatting and the complete sentences and everything. When I was... Secretary, it was pretty choppy, but this is <laughs> quite robust. <laughs> so we'll, we'll uh, people could just make note of anything they believe needs fixing as they scan and jog their memories. And just disclaimer: it is not enough. It is not time to revisit any of the issues in this meeting. It's just purely <laughs> an archiving uh, exercise. does jog your memory for issues, uh, save it for old or new business. So Michael, was an old business about Mark from Edward Jones coming to visit in January, it says in the notes, but we're thinking February, cause that would have been the- Yeah, the I, was, I would thank you, Jill. We went back and forth a little on that. Um, I don't know if I misspoke or that, or I said February and it should say February, but I was, in intending the next board meeting. And I thought CJ picked up that she'd reach out to him. So if my memory's correct, that place where it says under, is it under old business there? Yeah. Or it came up old, in discussion. It's under old business B? Yeah. Yeah, that would be the one thing I noted for catching, or I misspoke and said January and then February. So it should be February? I mean, it's in, yeah, because that would be the next uh, full board meeting. Do people see other needed fixes? That's, that's mm -hmm. really the only one. You can tell uh, Mark about changing from January to February. Well, I, I don't even think the outreach has happened. CJ is the treasurer, I believe, offered to okay. book him for February. So we are we're awaiting uh, any continued um, fixes or a motion to accept with that one change of the month. 
Thank so you. moved. Was that Pat? Yep, me. Much appreciated. We have a motion to accept the October 24th minutes, and we're looking for a second. I'll second it. Oh, thank you, Dave. Uh, motioned and seconded to accept the October 24th, 2023 meetings with the one uh, fix of changing January to February, which represents the first full board meeting of 2024. All those in favor, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. Fantastic. That is unanimously uh, passed. Uh, that brings us to the financial reports. And um, I, I think CJ just texted in yet again. Apologies for being late. She's wrapping up a meeting as well. Um, Jen, do you want to take your piece now? And I don't even, I don't know if it should ought to roll into the proposed budget or just leave it as uh, the here and now. Um, I think in the agenda, we kind of left it like here and now because part of the co-director's report, we, there's- It'll, it'll, it'll roll right. out then, great. Yeah. So, we'll, have, we'll have more more people then too, most likely. So in terms of the financials for this year, um, you know, with December, we're heading, I think we still do have two more payrolls to kind of go through, but all the other expenses have pretty much hit. So I think outside of the compensation, FICA and unemployment, they, the numbers should be pretty much done. I think outside of also, we're going to have um, the equipment. Gen generally in December is when we purchase all the new equipment that we need to replace or if we're buying a different style so that the equipment expenses we should expect to increase um, by the end of the year. But outside of that, all the other expenses have pretty much been through. So, and I think the general categories where we were over budget continue to be because we were, I think, as of the last meeting too. So the accounting was because of the tax return and I think um, outreach was always a little bit hard. And I think other than that, there hasn't been, um, the other one that probably we'll see it by the end of the year increases mileage. Generally the camera operators turn in their mileage near the end of the year. So some will have months of mileage that may um, hit and but the camera operators this year are pretty good about doing it monthly. So it shouldn't be too much more than what's in there. Um, am I reading correctly that our income came in at 106% of expected? Oh, so that's because we got the government appropriations um, amount that was for fiscal 24. So it came in, we were hoping that it might be delayed enough that it would hit next year's budget. We oh, do have okay. a next year's budget, but because the check well, came in, yeah. we deposited it. So you you'll think? notice that in yeah. government appropriations, it's 70,000, but that, that includes that extra 45,000 that we're hoping to use next year. <laughs> got it. So if that line item weren't there, we'd be a little, our income would be a little less than expected rep referencing declining cable revenues. Yes, and that's also noted in the but in the code director's report that we did get another Comcast check and it was less than the previous check. So that decline is continuing. So um, it is less than expected, even just from mm -hmm. this year's amounts so got it welcome palin we're on the financial reports right now hi everyone i came the most exciting exciting part of the meeting <laughs> <laughs> that's right um, <laughs> we're looking at the uh, complete year 2023 budget as it's in the packet and that's about a third of the way through maybe more closer to half I'm asking what the date in February the first board meeting is that could be other is that a Tuesday the 19th? I'm just wanting to put it in this book. Get down, get down. 
Was that Dave? Yeah, I was trying to make sure that I had in my new appointment book the date of the February board meeting. So I was uh, asking if anybody had already knew what that time was. There's a um, Tuesday called the 19th. The fourth Tuesday, I think I looked at it. It's the 27th. We have Thank you. Early. But I think we can go back to being the fourth Tuesday with the holidays. It got tricky. Like Thank I think you. this is the second Tuesday of December, but it's all, the only thing that worked. Um, topic financials. People have questions for Jin. And she's uh, wisely saving the proposed budget for next year for uh, co-directors report, Palin. But um, we are checking out how the year shook out, how 2023 shook out. And it does look like um, expenses came in under expected. So it was under, but we're also expecting that um, the equipment budget will increase. So generally we do end up spending the entire amount. So it may be that we are very close. So the 13, I think in the equipment we're under by 13 and that generally gets used up. So mm -hmm. that may end up adjusting it somewhat, but hopefully we'll be pretty, right. not significantly, but a handful amount. So is that a question for Zach? What's on a little end of yeah. year needs assessment? What 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 do we expect to? I can burn that up real quick. Yeah, you're get still still pretty vague there, Zach. No. So I what, think what's that... on, what's what's the need? We well a lot of different things. Um, it's kind of a bigger need. I was looking into changing our camera system. Um, so I've been researching that for a while. Um, but there's several other like just little things that we need. One of them is chairs for the studio. And so we have ones that match that are from the 60s. Yeah, I think there's a well, at least one as sort of a loose or broken. Uh, oh, that one broke. <laughs> that one finally broke. They completely <laughs> gave up. Yeah, we got we got as much life as we possibly could out of it. <clears throat> um, other questions, thoughts, and I don't know without the treasurer's report. Um, I have, I have a question. Go ahead. Am I allowed to? This is Nathan. Am I allowed to ask questions? Um, yeah, sh sure. What's up? Well, I just, um, to me, looking at this at a glance, Jen, did you say you have two more payrolls before the end of the year? Yes. And are you about 11,000 per payroll? Yes. Okay. And then if you spend the, uh, the credit, you know, that's plus 14, so you're, that's plus 36. Thank okay. expenses. Um, but that's still... To my eye, you're still well under expense budget. Yes. And I think part of it was um, some of the, I think we made some savings in the compensation just because we had a shift to health insurance versus being paid out the amount. So I think the amount that we were paying in health insurance and what we were paying out as compensation in lieu of benefits kind of came out where we ended up with a little bit of a surplus on that end. And I think also the legal fees and the um, the consultant amount is pretty high just because we're counting on an audit and the strategic planning consultant hasn't hit the books yet. So I think there are some places that there was a chunk of change that we were holding just in case and it didn't end up getting used yet. Cool. Thanks for entertaining my question. Oh, the other thing I thought is, can you, are, would it, would your policies or practices allow you to do a general entry right at the end of the year or the beginning of next year about the government appropriations and just to shift that? That's what I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do. Because, yeah, that 45000 we really, you'll see it in the next year's budget. And it was um, in the government, like FY24. So we are hoping that we can shift it. And I think it's not 
an issue as long as it's okay with the board. Would you need a motion for that or just, you know, no objections, go ahead and do it. I, guess, I mean, it's, it's confusing to see it in 2023. So it would be great if we could just push it where it belongs. That's what right. I, I do want to pull it out. I pondered it, but I was like, just so that it shows up because we did receive it and Received put it in the it bank. Then, sure. And, then, and also to say, you know, this is what we're hoping to do. And then maybe it, whether it's a motion or just like, if it's okay for us to do, and maybe that's to um, ask CJ if that's okay, or if there's anything that around that is goofy then, um, but hopefully it'll be just a journal entry. Yeah, I would say barring objections. Um, and then I, you know, if, if if it's quiet with questions for you, Jen, I don't know if it's a motion. We, I could entertain a motion to accept the financials uh, with the understanding that if CJ shows up, we reopen for the treasurer's report. I see nothing wrong with that if anyone wants to uh, keep us moving down field or you just die and ask questions. Jim in this 2023, how it shook out with a couple pending items, some expenses, and a little more payroll. Yeah, maybe I wasn't clear. We, we would need a, a a motion to accept financials in order to get to the co-director's report. Let's so move the financials. Uh, thank you, Pat. Is there a second? Second. Appreciate it, Palin. Um, all those in favor of opening, uh, close, closing out the financials uh, with the understanding we'll open it back up for the treasurer's report pending. CJ's arrival, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. All right, we've cleared the decks for the co-directors. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll probably just go over this in Zoom land, if that's okay. Um, you all have it in front of you. Great, okay. Um, yeah, so we, you know, keep on trucking along here. So uh, there was a lot of things that have happened. Uh, live productions, you can see there, highlighted. Um, there's a lot of uh, well-received, I think we had a ton of views on the Patrick Leahy growing up in Montpelier one. I remember that uh, did really well. We recently um, live stream and, and acted as some AV support on Hunger Mountain's annual meeting, Nathan was there as facilitator. So there's a nice uh, small world moment, right? So um, yeah, we've, uh, let's see, as far as our outreach community partnerships, there's a lot of, uh, a lot. I mean, relatively, there's a handful of new community producers coming in, which is exciting. We have two new studio shows, um, one of which uh, is from our, our in residence uh, Vermont public producer uh, working as an independent uh, volunteer community producer, not affiliated with Vermont public, but he's doing a show called out with lunch. Um, it's a fun call in show that he's going to try to do once a week. Um, you can see here and stop me if you have any questions, please. So uh, you can see here that Palin is going to be a community producer producing a show and Palin and I met uh, last week to talk about that. And so that's um, on in the pre-production phase, but it looks like things are moving forward and that's going to be uh, a little bit more in the field with doing some interviews and um, yeah, uh, focusing on local uh, leaders in the community. And I think it's great. So we're supporting Palin uh, as she coordinates that. Um, a ton of work has been happening with the Green Mountain Film Festival. This is kind of like the season leading up to the end of the year as uh, the tickets are being launched, hopefully this week. Um, a lot of hap is happening with organizing and programming and the team of Paivon and, and Sam 
and now Teresa are doing a wonderful job really leading this effort. And um, you can see we've got the dates finalized. Um, yeah, if you have any sponsorship ideas, send them our way. Teresa's leading the sponsorship effort. Yes, Pat, sorry, I had a different- well, Chris, you mentioned right when you began that you had a lot of hits on the Leahy um, show. Did you mean hits from other public access stations or hits from actual people? Hits. Um, I, I was really referring to uh, YouTube views. We don't get oh, the, num okay. the numbers right. on. I mean, maybe Jen can tell you the VMX numbers, but we don't get the numbers on Comcast. I don't know. Yeah. Hits from people. You mean like expressions of no, enjoyment? I just, um, I've always wondered how many pe people watch uh, my show. And sure. I've been told that you can only you can only tell how many stations have picked up my show to show to their viewers. So I've always just wanted to when you said that, I went, oh, maybe they figured out how to do that. But I guess not. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can we can't tell you how many people tuned into right. it on local television and we can't tell you how many people tuned it, into right, it YouTube, on the affiliates. YouTube but YouTube gives us yeah, numbers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know that one. Okay, thanks. Um, sure, yeah. And, you know, and that's one of the things that, you know, maybe we, we'll change in the future with that negotiations. But, yeah, that's that's a difficult. Uh, what do we got? So, okay, so, um, yeah, so let's see. Of course, we had our uh, board retreat, which was a success, we think. Uh, and Nathan's here tonight to uh, recap and talk about um, next steps and, yeah, and so we've given him, him some space. So I'm kind of actually, you know, trying to move through this quickly too, more so than we, more uh, more than we typically do. So um, Nathan, welcome. Uh, so let's see, staff. Um, we have two new camera operators, Bryce and O'Neill, um, which is great. Um, I think they're just getting out there now, um, through through the early training process with Zach. Um, and then, yeah, we heard from Jin, but um, Jin, if you want to speak to finan finances again in this section, that would be great. I was going to say, do you want to just finish off with the statewide and then I'll take over on the new budget because that kind of rolls right into the budget. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, great. So yeah, and that, yeah, that'll require a vote as well. To accept this. Yeah. So um, yeah, the last thing, you know, we have the section for uh, statewide regional activity and we've been busy uh, or I've been busy with the, um, the working with uh, meetings, uh, setting up meetings to just generate uh, support and raise awareness about what Van is doing uh, in this coming uh, session in January. And you can see here that we've been focusing on meeting with the House representatives, um, generate support for another $1 million ask for from a, a appropriations request for FY25. Um, and then also kind of just explain the high level uh, community media public, the high level uh, of the community media public benefit fund, which will be um, reintroduced in January. Um, and then I think both of those, so both in the House and in the Senate, we have a sponsor on the Community Media Public Benefit Fund, which is great. So I think at this point, it's just meeting with everybody and making sure uh, we get the questions asked uh, now. Um, and yeah, so I'm focusing on Central Vermont. Yeah. Chris, could I ask, when we do something like as extensive as the organizing and programming of the Green Mountain Film Festival, how do we evaluate after we've done it? How well, well it was done and how well it was received and what controversies may have ar arisen around how much of the Israeli side of the story was in the film festival and how much of the Palestinian side of the story was in the film festival? Is there a process well, for reevaluation when the festival's over? Sure, that's a great question. I don't think that the last uh, question will be addressed as far as uh, part of our processor workflow, just to let you know. But um, we we we're just doing this as an arts and cultural event, and I I don't necessarily think we're analyzing that. Um, but um, this is also new to us as an organization to um, fiscally sponsor and support um, 
such a such a larger effort of in the community um and so as you know the green mountain film festival um was we didn't really have a relationship with them in the past so i don't necessarily know how we'll analyze and evaluate our success after this but um yeah i know that uh we've been doing pretty good about documenting everything and just keeping you know um we, we're working with three a leadership team of three people then we have an advisory board um and so everything's moving forward and yeah Chris, I don't know. Do, you, do you know as um just sort of as baseline um at an average year the previous incarnation of the green mountain film festivals like how many screenings would they do in that yeah, so it's varied. Um, the 2019 was their last year, and um, they did about, uh, I, I can't tell you the number of screenings, but they did 10 full days, which is pretty uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And they, um, yeah, and so we're doing four full days. So that's a lot uh, more distilled version of this. And they've had, you know, I, th I think they've been pretty much th they did pretty well with the number of tickets sold. And, I, and what I've heard is that, you know, no matter the number of days and the number of screenings, they typically would have the same audience attendance numbers. Um, I don't have those on on hand, but yeah. Does that answer your question? Thank sure. You. Don't have them on hand, but they're available so we can kind of measure against. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the thing is that we're kind of expecting that as well. Now that we're coming back, I think we are pushing regionally more. Um, and also, you know, things have changed. Um, and Chad is on our advisory board. He can speak to some of this too, but things have changed over the, the last couple of years, even since the Green Mountain Film Festival has gone into hiatus, right? So uh, VTIF has really grown and they had successful hybrid festivals. White River Junction has a really strong festival now. And so the Green Mountain Film Festival, I think, acted as a, a, a real strong, uh, unique event and, and cultural kind of organization that now has a little bit more competition. And so it's kind of like finding a new thing and making a new, um, yeah there's a lot of newness that's coming out of this that, that has to and, and kind of finding our space in the state um so yeah thank you okay so <clears throat> i'm just going to go quick on the finances and it's primarily i have listed the um changes because we gave you the budget draft one last board meeting and in that time there was some changes so i just wanted to I made a draft two, we made a draft two, and I had listed the reason, the changes that we made and I highlighted them in gray. And the primary one is the cable revenue because they have been decreasing. What we did last year and how we projected for the next year was we took the lowest amount and used that as the monthly amount for the year. So since the check came in lower than before, that monthly amount I readjusted to reflect the lowest the lowest check that we got. So we're looking at a decrease about twenty, almost twenty five thousand from the draft one. So, oops, sorry, against this year, not against draft one. So that's the main piece that I wanted to go over. There was some other little changes where the unemployment taxes. Um, are higher than we expected. So I made an adjustment where I had taken some of the camera operators out, but I'm gonna keep them all in. So you'll notice that amount has been, that's increased. Our business insurance ended up being not as much as we projected in the budget for this year. So I did, we're expecting a 7% increase based on what got billed. So that's what that number has been adjusted to. And then the other piece is outreach which is the main piece is that the grace note which is the programming that we use the programming group that we use for the cable local programming guide they increased their rate 15 percent so that's what that amount jumped to so that um and that's a piece that is part of the cable system and it could be at some point we i may i was thinking about looking and seeing like it is a huge expense and whether a lot of people use it or not, especially if the cable folks aren't really 
if the cable numbers are dropping and if that programming, if people aren't hitting and going into that cable program, the programming guide, that it may be an expense that doesn't necessarily pay out to keep using. So I did, I put it in there and, but it is something that I know like in some of the other discussion groups with the other access centers, some, it went across all the access centers and some are choosing not to use Grace Note. So then it's like, since there are some access centers not opting to do the programming guide, that it could be something that would be an expense that we could take out that may not necessarily affect a ton of people just because it may be not something that a lot of people use within their cable system. So that's those are the changes against draft one that um, that happened. And I think um, and also the 4,500 or 45,000 in government appropriations that it doesn't show up in the budget draft one or two, but um, I think there's an extra report where there are extra columns if you wanted to see how the budget drafts worked against what was actual. I did pull it out so you could see um, what it, like the budgets looked against what we've actually done so far as of mid-December. So that was, those are, I just wanted to verbalize the highlighted pieces, but that's, um, and so outside of that, I think in terms of finances, there's, it's just that um, outside of the, what was said during the financial reports, I think that part's it for the co-directors. Yeah. Hi, Jen, I, um, when, when you first started, you talked about a um, $25,000 $25, reduction could you just explain that to me again? I missed it and I, that's oh, a lot so, of money. So it's actually, so this year's budget, the 2023 budget against what is the 2024. So right. what we've done is we took the lowest check for that month, for that year and used it to project. And that's where, so our checks have been decreasing and decreasing. And so I think even like the lowest check in I guess it would have been in 2022 when we put together the 2023 budget was considerably higher than what the lowest check in 2023 was that we put together the 2024 budget. So that's where I think if you, that's where that 25,000 came from is that our revenues are projected to be less than what we budgeted. And even like with the financials, we came in lower than our budget anyways. Like our actual revenues came in lower because those checks had been lower. So it's that decrease that we've always been talking about with the re cable revenues that we are seeing it. And so that's where that 25,000 came from. So okay. it was, I mean, so, but in terms of yeah. how it's different, <clears throat> sorry, how it's different in the drafts that I gave you, that I made an adjustment. So it's about 16,000 that from budget draft one and budget draft two. And that's just because that check amount is what we use for the whole year. And so um, that's what- okay. Thanks, sorry, I missed it. Sorry, didn't oh, that's understand. Okay. No, that's, <clears throat> yeah, that's a key question. Actually, Jenna, you said the lowest quarterly check we received in 23 was 98,000. No, that's for, the, yes, for 2023, the actual. That's the one we just received. So is that the number you used? To, to, did you just to multiply do, that by four? Yes. I get 392 when I do that. So what I did was I took that, and it's, it, are you doing it for the, it's the capital revenue and the operating revenue because it gets separated out? So is that... So yeah, there it is. Yeah, that comes it comes right in what okay. I'm getting. Yeah, I was like 332, but right together. Those numbers match. Thank you. Okay. Um, other questions on this uh, proposed 2024 budget. Also, just big thanks to Jen for giving us that preview in um, the last board meeting. So it's not as not as yeah. daunting to digest all this. We have um, grazed over much of this ground um, and Jin's highlighting of the revision since that draft, uh, incorporating some of our feedbacks and just, and just the financial reality of the last quarterly check all accounted for here. Um, more questions for Jen, I do believe 
she would we would all love this to be approved this evening um Can I just, we'll go ahead pat it's one more question do does jen have the authority to if we went uh, higher if we went higher or lower on one budget line item can we borrow from another budget line item i was just looking at legal expenses we had an un uh, the budget was 833 and we didn't expend anything but if we had would we be able to take it out of um, consulting which would have been the the next logical line are we able to s switch numbers around you know what i'm saying or yeah, am i not making sense I, I think that's what we're hoping to to find out today if like if that's if that is something that someone would yeah because it's the bottom that. line that counts more than the individual line items correct sort of yeah, yeah historically the discretion's been there okay something and now reach ends up being used over here okay that's what i wanted Une to unexpected know. low unexpected high the two meet yeah good so it's the bottom line we're playing to we're looking making sure the bottom lines come out okay yeah, and these are, you know, really great predictions, but then life right. happens. Yeah, right. Shit happens, as they say. Uh, question. Okay, cool. um, okay, this is CJ. As your treasurer, I have a question. Um, CJ, we, we, opted to, we opted to double back, to accept the financial reports and double back to you if you had anything on the treasurer's report. Um, so... That, okay. that that slot is available. We just didn't want to sit around and wait. We did. Ex we we moved we moved the ball downfield. Um, but the floor is yours on this budget question. <laughs> yep. No, it's a question for. So, you know, the uh, obviously the forty five thousand more than makes up for the loss of approximately is it five thousand this year due to decreased revenues from Comcast. Although that forty five was in like so we knew we were getting that forty five thousand this year. So for the twenty twenty four. So in terms of the lost revenue, it makes up some of it. But the other piece I did want to know, like so because of the the loss in revenue and the changes that we made in budget two, like the capital mm -hmm. gains slash savings, like we're hoping to pull some of that out. And it could be like some of the savings that we did with when this year budget or this year ends. Like some of the expenses that we didn't use, we might be able to shift. But so that 39 is like pulling from the savings to make that budget come out to be, I think we ended up with a negative 10,000 because it's still the audit. That 10,000 is for the audit. So I just left it at the negative 10. But mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of like whether that 45,000 will necessarily cover that gap, I think because our compensation lines also went up, it's hoping, but I think, um, it is, sorry, CJ, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, you didn't, you were trying to answer my question. I'm just listening. So that's where, you know, that 45, I think we've been knowing because they're, they kind of, the Van Advocacy Group told us like they had a five-year plan of bridge funding that they were hoping to do. So I think that 45 and same with this year, they're gonna be going back to the legislative to ask for another million. And I think in the last meeting, there was like Van Advocacy handout that talked about their plan for the five-year bridge funding so that it would hopefully coincide with the public benefit fund coming into play too. So even though we are losing on funding, I think it matches some of the lost revenue, but it doesn't also like totally make up for the increase in compensation that we were experiencing with more events and camera operators out there. Okay, so at the moment we're with the increase in uh, essentially staffing uh, compensation, whether it's part time or full time. Yes, we're I upside that, down. Yes, where we're hoping to pull from savings, and e and with the initial budget draft, we did pull some as well. Um, I think, and that. I think in the initial budget draft that we presented, we were hoping to pull 21,000 from savings or capital gains to ma match up the difference. Um, and that wasn't even with the decrease in revenues with the newest check. And so we did see it that, that one line item go up to try to cover the differences. And Jen, am I reading correctly that from 23 to 24 compensation actually goes down, but it's health insurance that took the big jump. Huh. 
from so, 19 to 43? So what compensation holds is that in 2023, we had a staff member who chose to do cash in lieu of benefits. And so that amount was higher than what was actually chosen. So that's why that compensation line is much higher. It isn't like you would expect since that staff took health insurance, the decrease would be considerable, but it's not because we also opted to increase the number of camera operator hours that we're gonna be using this year, just because we noticed that we're trying to do better production. Sometimes that's multi cameras and multi people. So I think in that sense, like you can't quite capture that compensation did go up in terms of like the amount of staff time that we're hoping to use and pay out because a lot of that in the in the 2023 was caught up in the cash in lieu of benefits that was in that line. So I'm seeing okay. on 5010 that it that compensation went down. Is that full-time staff and then somewhere else is camera operators? No, that's camera operators and full-time staff and it would have been also cash in lieu of benefits. So that's that 5010 captures all of that. And so when we pulled out the cash in lieu of benefits and we're not paying that out in 2024, that's where that health insurance increases, but the compensation line decreases. It just, yeah. you don't see it as much. aggregate, it's a jump. Yeah. yeah. I'm all clear there, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jen. I appreciate the answer. Um, so, on the kind of what I'm seeing is possibly a little bit of a good news, bad news. So I have a couple of questions. Um, on the good news side, we're at restore is we're at the highest interest rates for very very safe investment vehicles that we've been at for a very long time. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask the board for a motion when we get to the financial section to approve some actions uh, that I take on behalf of Orca. The but before we do that, so right now based on the money that was transferred over um, about half a year ago, we're, we're getting an additional uh, approximately $6,000 that we were not seeing just as a yield on, on the, the funds that we were able to put into safe high yield investments compared to what they were doing before. That'll help a little bit with that hole. Um, the 150,000 approximately that's in Orca savings is that currently at the like 0 0.02 or yes. 0.29? Okay. Do you want that to be moved over into the higher yield laddered CDs, given that you will still have access to them maturing every three months? It'll yield an approximately at that rate with current interest rates. Um, for we can we can do a very safe thing with them that'll yield an extra six or seven thousand over the next year. Not saying that'll be true next year because these things should start coming back down, but. I think so. I think um, it's just, you know, when we get the deposit, the check, Comcast check, it, it's huge. And then we use it to for across three months. But if we had access and so we could pull it, then if we needed to, then I would say I'd be okay with that. And I think. Um, Especially with the and that forty five thousand because it came in so soon, it seemed like that was one of the things I was going to ask to see if you wanted to shift over till we needed it. Okay, um, yeah, we can take that offline, but it, we should do that yeah. just because it sounds like right now the extra, you know, whatever it'll be, four to six or seven thousand, wouldn't be a bad thing to have coming in as long as you have access to the funds the way you need them. Um, so. My final question, though, is, is, is just one of, uh, so you added a lot of camera operators to have higher production values, but it's causing a net loss. Is that right? So I think our plan was we were trying to increase the production value so that when we went to go and ask for, for them to pay, that they were familiar with, like, okay, you know, it's <clears throat> like getting a good multi-camera piece of content rather than it's gavel to gavel. So we are starting to try to increase that production value so that when we came to the ask, they were starting to be familiar with like, oh yeah, you know, it's not just. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, you're basically 
giving them, this is a little bit of a, okay, we're going to ask you for more support from the legislature. Is that right? And, and we're going to show you what you're getting ahead of time. Is, is it kind of like that? It is. And also if we're going to go to an organization and say, you know, we're do, we do your annual meeting, this is what you've been counting on. We've kind of, you know, been doing it as just part of our mission and supporting you. But if you can kick, you know, it is a little bit more costly for us to do it. Can you part, maybe put some toward it? And same with like yep. the municipals, if, you know, if it comes to, but I think by just having general better production value in there, that it would make that ask a little bit easier. Yep. Thank you very much. So you're doing it as an investment, essentially, well, in our future. Yeah. And it might not be more cameras. It might be just like one person's on audio, another person's on the camera. So one person just focuses on one aspect of it. Sure. I was just trying to have a better understanding of the addition of unbudgeted personnel. Uh, and I think that, you know, let's see how it turns out. But based on the idea that this is an investment to increase the revenues coming in to provide something that's in that is totally consistent with Orca's mission, its public, you know, charitable mission. Uh, I wanted to understand it because. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, that's a good uh, conversation. It's also a thank you to the legislature in, in that they already mm -hmm. have invested in um, the public access stations and um, yep. you know, doing a bit of an upgrade there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also an expression of gratitude as well as an investment and in hopefully further sure. reasons to be grateful. And having it in our minutes that there's you know some thinking here about uh, what more we can do and how it benefits everybody seems like a positive. So I, uh, I appreciate the explanation and um, let's, uh, let's just monitor it and watch it. And maybe you guys are setting an example for all the other <laughs> public access components. Um, more questions on the uh, 2024 proposed budget or a, or a motion to accept. Or are we still talking? So, Michael, I did kind of flow into, I remember you saying that about needing to accept the co-director's report, and I was hoping to... Like, oh, no, I, I'm seeing this as fully within the co-director's report, okay. but within the, I think the budget needs its own motion, and then we, if there's more on the co-director stuff, great, but... Um, I I do see us. Uh, I do see a, you do have a separate agenda item. I don't know if that's problematic, but um, I'm comfortable with the brackets being. We're still within co-directors. But it's indisputable. The the proposed budget needs its own motion. Uh, to accept. <sighs> or we're still talking about it. Well, I'll make the motion if nobody else will. All right. Thanks, Pat. Is carrying us through here. We have a motion to accept the 2024 budget. And we would need a second. I Alex seconded. I heard, was that Dave? Yes. All right, uh, Pat, so moves. Dave has seconded. We've had some robust conversation. And then it got quiet, so I think it's safe to call the question. All those in favor, accepting the 2024 budget as proposed, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be nays. And that's unanimous. Congrats, Jin and co-directors. Thank you. Uh, that's that's tricky when we get a uh, final quarterly check. That's, I think that's our first below $100,000 quarterly check in a long time. So um, not, not panic time, but we are, are seeing that slow, steady uh, decline. Um, and then just in terms of mop up here, 
Um, is is there is there more uh, that the co-directors would like to um, direct us to, or shall we roll right into an ex full acceptance of the full co-directors report? I was curious about one thing. If I uh, just trying to remember, I know that it seems like we we were decided several years ago that we we were going to do several budgets at a that we were planning to run at a deficit. This is like back to um, the previous administration, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering how many years into that are we? Um, and are we still, are we still doing that now? I, I'm, I'm not exactly clear. So I'm not sure exactly what the, I think before Rob left, he presented a budget where he had some monies in the capital savings, um, or the capital gains and, at, and came out to a negative at the end. So I'm not sure if like we, you know, theoretically what we're presenting is a deficit budget because we are pulling stuff out of the savings capital gains. And I think that we weren't presenting one as as much as his. And that was where we made the adjustment. So I don't know how much, I don't remember what he was, but I think it was like when the salaries got adjusted that I think when we offered, I think we changed all the camera operators to like $16 an hour. So there was there was a shift in, in, in wage that started the, the deficit budget. So I think we might be in like year two. And then when we decided not to do the executive director and just do the co-directors, we decreased that deficit. But I think that now when we're starting to add more into more camera operators, like it's starting to creep up there again. But I'd have to look to see how much he had in the capital gains on that budget that he presented where it was, I think, at the end, at the bottom, it was still a negative 30,000. Mm -hmm. So, but then it would have been with the capital gains, it might've been even more than that. So I think essentially, if you look through here, we are looking at a deficit budget because we are pulling from savings. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that's how long we want to continue on with that, we probably, you know, we're hoping to start looking at ramping up like production revenue and, you know, and so hopefully we might, and our production revenue was lower this year just because city council, like they were paying a bunch, but they're not doing their meetings in that room, but it looks like they might be again. So that might go up again. Um, so if that answers your question, sorry. Yeah, and yeah. I, I may have, should have answered, asked that before, but I'm trying to get things written in the right yeah. section of the... Uh... Sorry. <laughs> of this i was just yeah, sort of sure. curious to say at what point we were planning to not be if and when we were planning to not be in a, a deficit budget anymore so i'm hoping like i don't know real quick of how quickly like it i can't i wouldn't be comfortable saying like in the next two years it would it is something that's on our mind and we're looking at okay so is it you know and it's also I think a question just being a new in this is how much of the savings from the previous year. So this year when we close it out and we, you know, we didn't spend a bunch of money that was in the budget, does that get counted as like we didn't have a deficit because we didn't end up spending it, even though we presented it just because. And mm -hmm. so I think in that sense, it's like, you know, does that that surplus get how does that get folded back into this year's budget that mm -hmm. is like using that that is that okay to use as like not quite a revenue but some sort of income source that you know pulling from savings but it's like pulling from not like the surplus from the previous budget so i'm not sure exactly how yeah actually when chad chad asked that question i looked at 23 budgeted versus actual and you know net operating income eighty two thousand. um i think there's is there there's still payroll and some capital there, but I think it, it may just look like very good, you know, uh, best practices, conservative, um, conservative budgeting that, that things come out better in the wash on the other end as they did in 23. Am I reading that correctly when you compare budgeted versus actual on 23? For this year, well, there's that like forty five thousand that kind of goofs things up. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
<laughs> I can, um, and I can, you know, it's one of the fun reports that I would like to do is to just kind of look at, you know, what was the surplus in terms of how ORCA has been in the past of every year? Has there always been a surplus and where does that go? And mm -hmm. so it is, um, but in terms of answering your question, yes, we are still at a deficit budget just because the revenues keep going and hopefully, and we'll see how the benefit fund, if that comes in, if that will help also. And I think that was kind of like the hope was that we'll run a deficit, but then the benefit fund or the government appropriations, like somehow that might help bridge that revenue issue that we're experiencing with Comcast. And then and then to your, to your question, I think again, historically it's been, if there's like, leftover 2023 money it's just sort of actively available for 24 that's i believe that's been past practice um, is that oh, okay question mm -hmm. uh further discussion of the proposed 2024 budget or a uh, motion. Um, I guess my only discussion question is, um, in terms of running a deficit budget, what is your breakaway point? So right now we agree with, you know, I think my sense is we all say, oh, okay, we, we think this is a reasonable plan. Um, is there a point where you're going to look and say, okay, I think this might not be a good idea. Let's course correct. It's not, you know, it's, there's, this is not a critical question. It's more just of a, hey, all right, you're, right now you're running along, you're planning to run upside down a little bit, which is okay, because you're, you're investing. Uh, if the investment doesn't pay off, what point are you going to be like, okay, we need to course correct? Well, I think that that's part of the st strategic planning that we've been you know talking about. And that's why we're doing the strategic planning project. Um, okay. I, I would say that, that that should be something that's kind of, baked into the plan you know if if money's not coming in at the statewide level um in the next couple of years you know if if yeah, then well, this is a shorter term question than that this is you're currently planning to run you're asking us to approve a budget that's that's got a plan to run upside down well right when i mean when i say the next couple of years i mean if the the public benefit fund is not you know fully supported in the next session um then we need to shift our focus and our fundraising and development um needs to that you know the energy that we're putting into the van advocacy at the statewide level needs to change and then, um but as far as when we yeah as far as when we would say okay we're not going to have a uh deficit budget or you know that i don't i don't think we have an answer for that well the other bit would be that I think part of the capital gain savings is that we have that mad money from before. And so right. we're like, okay, so right now we have that mad money that we were going to use to maybe make some changes or to do like that one-time expense of something. So we're like, okay, well, could we maybe pull a little bit of that mad money and cover like this part of maybe making the change in production value? So I think that's where like we wouldn't, like when we were putting together the budget and seeing what was reasonable, I think we were getting nervous as we were hitting like that 39 and we're like, okay, we know that we're low on expenses. We have some coverage for the expenses from this surplus for this year, but we also have maybe the mad money and maybe could we maybe use some of that mad money to shift some of that deficit that we had. So some of the savings when we Back when you know we weren't taking salary increases, we were like, okay, save, 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 and so we did save a bunch of money. And so we're like, okay, can we use some of that to make these changes and hopefully keep us out of that deficit, but not um, like not counting on it because we also know it's like finite. So that's where also we felt a little bit more comfortable in saying, okay, we're going to increase the compensation because we have that bad money. Yeah. Further discussion or a calling of the uh, question. So what are we calling on right now? What the last vote that we had, you said 
that it was on the budget, but was that actually on the co-director's report? Um, when Pat moved. Oh, and... I'm sorry. We have already we have already accepted this budget. My apologies. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just looking to close out the co-directors report. We 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 would use a, a new do a motion for that. Thank you for catching that, Chad. And I'll make a motion to approve the co-directors report. Um, that chat is so moved to accept the full uh, co-directors report. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. That was Palin. Appreciate it. Um, all those in favor of accepting the co-directors report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be nay. And that's unanimous. Thank you all. And thanks, Chad, working for with the uh, the wonky order there. The budget 2024 is already taken care of. Um, let's see. Old business, new business. Um, and we do have um, uh, time for our guest, Nathan. So at, at 7.38, um, it's, it may be later than you think um, with that extra line item at the end. Um, old business um, in the parking lot is CJ proposing planning for an audit. The other piece was um, uh, this kind of perennial discussion of Mark coming back to visit. Um, there was a discussion, I don't even remember if it was me proposing it, but that it would be Feb February. Um, and I recall, CJ, did you offer to reach out to Mark and book him for our February 27th meeting. Your video is there, but your audio oh. isn't. There you are. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, so I have not done that yet, and I'm happy to do that if that still looks like a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I mean, we were, we were, we, no expectations that you would have already because we hadn't nailed down the, um, meeting date but it looks like it'll be the 27th of february is back to the fourth tuesday oh okay. um, yeah but and the second tuesday for me conflicts with another with the ec fiber board meeting which yeah, i currently is got one of my second tuesday sometimes we've done third tuesday on a holiday avoidance but um just the way the calendar fell hmm. third tuesday wasn't working for anyone either um no. So this is a very rare second Tuesday. Our standing is fourth. So February will represent uh back. Yeah. To and if we could go to first Tuesday instead of second, that would avoid those conflicts for me. Yeah, I expect I expect that to be, you know, is remain extremely rare. Yeah. Uh, By the way, just the, the interesting news for those of you, just because we are a media company and this is a potential interest. Uh, BlackRock called the bonds, some of the bonds that uh, AC Fiber had put out there. Whoa. So in case and, anybody was wondering, as I've been trying to find out for a while, who bought that debt, who controls the company? I always thought of BlackRock as investing in like Pfizer because they're the major bond holder or the major uh, uh, shareholder for Pfizer. Wow. Oh, gotcha. Um, CJ, do you want to do you want to speak on the the audit old business piece, or it's just it's pending? Yes, no, that would be fine. Um, <clears throat> when we did when I raised this uh, previously, and I don't recall which meeting exactly, but um, I said that Pat Batchelder, who's in Barry and Keene, was recommended. She did the um, uh, the audit for Stagecoach. If anybody knows about that situation where, you know, and so she's just a well-respected local auditor. Um, I've sent, I just sent her a message. So I haven't heard back yet saying, are you interested in doing an audit for not for profit? And, you know, and uh, if there are that you all would like to recommend. The, the background here for those new board members is I took over for the original treasurer who had done a great job and had been here since ORCA began. Um, an audit had not been performed since I think it was 2015 or maybe it was 2008 and there was a financial review in 2015. Whatever it was, 
uh, I have still got there. Everything looks copacetic to me. It's just that it's really good governance um, to, to do an audit every so often. And so the board um, agreed to set aside some funds to have an audit done. And uh, so that's it. We're, this is not a reaction to anything. It's a, it is a good housekeeping. And the fact that it, it creates a nice handoff and a clean beginning. Yeah, and it's been a while. Other old business? Uh, yes, yeah, so, well, I've got the, uh, do you, it, this may need to be in the financial section, but I'm, because I do have another board meeting that they, I'm supposed to be in, would it be, uh, would it be possible to shuffle the agenda a little bit? Because you'd like to. Come here. CJ, because you'd like to um, go back to the financials. <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to be in two places at once, right? Yeah, now. yeah, no. We're, let's consider let's consider that a great place to to get you um get you that slot reopened. Okay, super. So, um, I'd like to uh, request a motion to um. Well, let me just ask this: If you have had wonderful experience or would like a competitive bid for the um for the auditor. I'm fine with that. I just would like some recommendations. Right now I have a recommendation from Paul Haskell, who was uh, one of the stagecoach board members um, and an EC Fiber uh, founding board member and the Sharon Select Board Chair for I think 10 years. And I reached out because, you know, he's done a lot of municipal governance and nonprofit governance and said, we have no worries about anything. And these are really straightforward books who would be good and local and cost effective. And he said, Bonnie Batchelder uh, is great. I'm going to just paste her contact information into the chat window. If there are other requests or suggestions, great. I'm happy to follow up. If not, um, I'd like a the board's approval. Uh, okay, I thought I had it in my text window. I'll try to get it and paste it in. Um, I'd like the board's approval to uh, to go ahead and hire and again, you know, I don't know whether we need to do a competitive bid. I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, if the board's willing to waive, um, that's uh, that's the only person I've got on the radar right now. Any discussion there before I ask you guys to approve that? I um, glad I'm glad you have a lead. You I think I don't even I don't even even know if you'd need approval as long as it's coming in within the line item. The main question is, do we need to do a competitive bid for the auditor or simply select somebody who's known in the area and recognized? I have no personal experience with her. And we do have a good group of local people here. So I'm taking suggestions. Just, I, I'm just curious what the, um, do we have anything in the, um, in the rules and regs about sole sourcing? Is it does it depend on a certain amount of funding being spent that we'd have to go out for uh, competitive bids like three or whatever, or are we free to do sole source? Because I do know I do know the person at least the firm anyway. I know the Batchelder. I don't think we have a, I don't think we have a trigger amount that would. Oh, we don't. Of course, hmm. I, I, that would be news to me. Huh. It's definitely nothing in the bylaws. Okay, well that's good. And is and is and past practice has just been you know is if someone if someone's quote comes in on uh, uh, you know within the amount we budgeted for it, yay great. Uh, but okay. yeah, I, I hear like CJ is looking for leads if people want to throw them her way. Right. And uh, is is there anybody who, you know, Pat, would you recommend that we continue to just take a couple of other suggestions or are you? I just always feel better. You can make phone calls. We don't have to do a, a formal bid, but maybe three, three phone calls, maybe to ask if you have the time. I know you're very busy. At this point in time, I am so maxed. I mean, right now it's just being yeah, right. at once. But I, but if you would like to, I would be delighted to consider anybody that you would recommend. Or would so if you want to get on a team, we can do that and, and delay this. Okay, I could make the phone calls for you if you if we could just have a, 
offline yep. chat and I can make some phone calls because I know some people and ask okay, them great. for a bid. As long as yep. a, for, uh, a verbal bid, bid is okay, I just feel more comfortable. It saves a lot of problems if the if the public gets a little berserk. Okay, I've given you my cell phone just in case you okay. don't have it in the chat window. And if you pull that out, okay. just uh, shoot me a text, Pat. And okay, what I'll be I'm... planning on is just you run this. Um, I'll go ahead and get that one quote and uh, okay you get the other two and we'll bring it back. That sounded okay. like a very productive conversation. I'm Thank you. Okay with you guys. Real time Super. problem solving. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then as far as it goes, uh, so with that, we will, we won't even bring my motion. We don't even need to table it because we've got a All different right. plan. Um, so uh, it'll be an agenda item for next board meeting to approve the auditor and get that going. Fair enough. Good. Sounds great. Okay. All right. And then uh, the other thing that I'd like, I would like the board to approve my going ahead and creating this new account and starting to uh, take a hard look. Uh, it'll probably be after the holidays, but um, you know, if it'll be the, the end of December or beginning of January before the next board meeting, I would like to be able to come back and say, we've got the new account created. We are, you know, here's the strategy um, for this. Uh, we've been talking about it since I got in. And at the moment, we're still on the same old stuff. Nothing's changed there and it's not performing that well. The only place, you know, we've had some, Changes made in the in in the in the use of the savings money, which is which needs to be fairly liquid, um, and you've already got the results from that. So with that, I'd like the board to approve uh, the change in the accounts. That would require my signature, Mike Abadi's signature, and Mike Doyle's signature, the past treasurer, to make that happen. Yeah, and I think that we've been we've been talking about this for a good long time, so. We're all fully apprised on the ins and outs. Um, and you're just looking for a motion to actually just pull the trigger and create that um, account that's out of American funds. Different fee system, but it makes sense. We Correct. Exactly. Yeah. And American funds remain part of the... Uh, yeah, it's not leave. a complete walk away, right? That's a good that's point right. as well. Um, so I, I, as a chair, I can't make a motion, so... Um, I don't, I don't know, CJ, if you, you could, I think you could put, you could make okay. the yep. motion. I make and, my own motion and then see how the board feels about it. Sure. So um, if you get a second, right. we're in, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So I'd like, um, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and modify the uh, current uh, investment management strategy. Uh, to create a new account that allows a, uh, a more diversified approach to the market with Orca's, um, uh, well, just with Orca's investment funds. And a second. Second. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, okay. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. Aye. Is uh, unanimous. Great. Um, I guess we'll just catch all old business, new business, or um, if there's nothing left, we'll roll right into Nathan. It does sound quiet. Yeah, it's Nathan, rolling. you're up. All right. Um, good to see you all again. And thanks for letting me sit in on the meeting. It's great to watch you all operate. Um, and so I just point of clarification, are you, are we done at eight or are we done at 8.30? Um, you know, we shoot for eight and we, we okay. hardly, hardly never hit it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start by being succinct and then, uh, you know, the, the, it's up to you how much, you, how much more time you want to put into this this evening. Um, CJ, I'm sorry to have missed you at the retreat. Uh, seems like your voice would have been great to have there. Um, uh, I thought it was, from my view, it was a productive retreat with, uh, both sort of soft goals and hard goals in mind, hard goals being making actual progress on the planning and then soft goals being more repetitions and practice within your organization of folks working within the government of the um, sociocracy uh, circles format. And, um, and then I think that it's not, uh, it's not for nothing that strategic planning takes 
a certain mindset and a certain orientation towards what do we mean by goals? What do we mean by objectives and strategies? And then figuring out, you know, what, what do we, what actions are we going to take in service of these things? And then placing those uh, strategies, especially onto a timeline that's realistic within the capacity of the organization, which has been, that's a drum, uh, the, Zach and Jen and Christopher will tell you that the, the capacity drum is one I've been beating constantly when I work with them, which is be cautious because it's not as though anybody here is is uh, twiddling, twiddling their thumbs during the day wait, waiting for something else to do. Uh, so being careful about what you commit to in terms of new work. Um, the If we'd had more time this evening, I think one of the things that Jen was wishing for and I I'm completely supportive was the idea that at the retreat, we had two working sessions where people broke out into uh, circles and then not really enough time when we were back together for folks to both report out and then take time to reflect across circles and sort of talk about the way some of these things overlap. Uh, I don't sense that we're going to have time for that this evening if we're going to be in, in any way honor the, um, the agenda time. So let me skip that for now. Um, I think the most important thing for you all to do is to decide on a path forward to complete the plan. Uh, and I, I LS, when in a conversation with um, staff, I talked about a sort of continuum of options, one of which is that the staff just takes it on and drafts the remainder of the plan and then presents it to the board. Um, a sort of middle position would be that the circles work independently of each other and then come back with more, more work within each area. Uh, thank you, Jen, for sharing that. Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, circles work, work independently, report back to the board as a whole, and then the board as a whole ratifies, probably mostly ratifies the proposals made by each individual circle. Uh, and then the other end of the spectrum is that the, the board and staff, maybe with my support or maybe not, get together for another three hour session at least and work collectively to um, flesh out and finish out the plan. So I think that in a perfect world, you would have another retreat session and just keep working in that really productive way where everybody's present and contributing. Uh, my guess, understanding the way people's lives are, is that that's maybe an unrealistic expectation uh, and one of the things I appreciated at the retreat was the energy that folks were bringing to it in that moment. And I, I think if I'm in your shoes, I would opt for returning to that energy and completing the plan sooner so you don't lose momentum. And so I, I, I recommend you go with the circles practice working within each circle independently, bring that work back to the board as a whole, and then the ratify um, so sort of further fleshed out plan as soon as you can. But that's a discussion um, we can have right now or you all should think about internally. Uh, and I think that the one of the questions there is, do you feel like you have the, um, you know, when you get together as circles, do you have the clarity to be able to work efficiently through this, uh, on, you know, work on additional goals and objectives? Uh, or do you need more support? And I, when I work with clients, especially organizations like yours, I try to say, you know, you want to, you want to fire me as quickly as you can, right? The the more the more uh, internal ability, internal capacity you have to do this work, you should do it if you can. Um, that's not saying I'm not available. I love working with you. And then maybe maybe before we address that in a discussion, we just scroll to the next page, Jen. So the second page of that, I just, I pulled an example of one of the concrete pieces that came out of the retreat. Uh, the goal was, and I, I, I edited this a teeny bit, but systemized training and accessibility for the equipment in the studio. So that's a desire to be more effective, more uniform, more efficient in a sort of internal operations sense, as far as I understand it. Um, and then working, Backwards from there, well, how would you accomplish that? You would uh, create a playbook and or a curriculum and then practice that in um, with camera operators, with independent producers, with 
you know, any sort of hard technical user of your facilities and equipment. And then two ways that two two actions you were going to engage with to uh, contribute to that. One was to inventory the equipment and you know, understand what you have and uh, what might need be needed for training on specific equipment. And then the other was that uh, understanding that other organizations are t are facing similar questions or have already solved similar puzzles. And so making uh, literally field trips, you know, visits to other public access stations to observe uh, their operations and, and other, other ways they do things and learn from them. And you listed, I think in the session, you listed JAM, uh, uh, Media what is it? Media factory. Media factory, and there's one other. Franklin, is that right? Pat, Pat had the Pat was offering yeah, this. Yeah, oh. they they own their right. building. They built new, right? Okay, so yeah. mostly I just wanted to illustrate this this way to to show. I think sometimes it's helpful if it's a little bit more visual. But these are the actions you would take. You know, you make these field trips. You would inventory your equipment. Uh, probably staff mostly would put some thinking into what is the, you know, what do we need to train folks on? And then, you know, the, the piece that I added in there was, was use the curriculum and refine it. Because even if you make a, a playbook, you're going to, you know, Zach's going to start training people in a sort of stepwise uniform fashion. And Zach's going to realize, oh, it actually, you know, this, this element is not detailed enough. And then this element is superfluous. And so you'll refine it over time. But the, I like this one because it's quite concrete, and I also like it because it suggests to me that over time, this will increase the prof professionalization of your production, and it will also decrease the burden on staff to sort of do corrective stuff or, or sort of ad lib uh, training because you can be more confident in the skill set of your producers and camera operators. So let me scroll back up to the... Next page. So just going back to that first page, um, uh, I would say open, open, open mic, open floor for what what process do you think you want to take on to try to close the, the strategic planning out? Do you want to do another retreat, uh, either with me present supporting you or not? Do you want to work independently within the circles and then report back to the board, or do you want to uh, delegate this to the staff, and then, um, and the reason I, the reason I'm not advocating for that option, though I have a lot of respect for the staff, is that part of what I think is exciting and, and proving to be successful about your your sociocracy model is that this board is quite engaged, and and at the retreat the board was quite engaged, and I think a strategic plan is more likely to succeed when everybody who's involved in carrying it forward was involved in designing it. I see Pat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, did you want to have a, a suggestion? I personally would like to get back with our individual circles now that I understand a little bit better from the strategic plan what we should be thinking and and doing, and then have a strategic planning meeting. I think that would be very beneficial because I learned a lot, and I'd like to focus on the circle. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, okay. the certain objectives, and then get back to the strategic plan. That's my yeah, suggestion. I, I think that's a real natural, given that we're, we're coming into an off month and co-directors could just um, call together right. their individual circle at a time that works for people. We don't have to pick one night that works for the full board. Right. Um, Considering I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet, I just wanted to put that in the minutes. <laughs> Not any, but that's fine. None, uh, zip, zero. So is that, are we, is that there's there's two yays for circle work in January and then uh, reconvening. Um, I see Jessica's thumbs up. I mean, this, I, this would not require a motion. This is just sort of our, a consensus of how we, how we want to. I agree. I'm not sure if you can see our in-person yeah. thumbs up. David and oh, I great, both great. <laughs> right, so this just sounds like by acclamation, um, co-directors will uh, call call their circles together. 
uh, in January. And that's, you know, no need for a quorum. Um, remote, it's it's just a nice little, the last one um, was really, really useful. The prior to the strategic planning meeting, where we had this long laundry list and, and tailing you and you're figuring out what pieces go together. So no, in terms of your question, Nathan, I feel like this, there's already some decent to good functionality in these, these, you know, infant circles. Um, and just thanks for um, on that other page, picking that concrete objective um, just to visualize. That's also a nice one because it pretty it's it falls almost like completely within the facility circle. Some of our other goals will, will have messier overlap, but um it, just in terms of like digesting it, picking one that is pretty cleanly, I doesn't have much of any, if any, overlap is uh helpful. Yeah. Great. And just to uh clarify. Are you then, you'll then reconvene in February, do regular board business and also commit some time at that meeting to do some collective work within the board? And yeah, then, and okay. imagine assess if we like, boy, do we need to use our March off month in a in a way that's more okay. of whole group versus circles. I think I think there'd right. be an assessment piece because we certainly can't tuck, tuck in a full on strategic planning meeting within a board meeting, but... Mm. Um, uh, that response made sense. Yes, it did. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right. you, so I did a lot of yeah, did a lot of talking. I was going to ask did any of you have questions, and it sounds like David does. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you've used this format before, uh, the step by step circles and, and that idea, and, and and a creative plan. Do you have any copies of other creative plans? So I think I sent sent some examples to the staff, um, a lot of times what I've, you know, what I've done is I'm supporting a group in a retreat, like mm -hmm. we did, we make it to a certain degree mm -hmm. and then that the staff or the, the staff and board take it forward from there. Um, uh, the other way to answer that is that in uh, Christopher especially has in the lead up to this process, you know, had other examples that, that he drew upon those, um, uh, Rural was it rural Vermont, right? And then there was oh, one other. Yes, right. And I so we looked at rural Vermont and then Kellogg covered. Oh. And Kellogg, right? And so the so the other thing is about the structure of it in yeah. terms of the product. And uh, the rural Vermont example was more of a matrix, you know, uh, which is somewhat the model that that I think Jen, who's been organizing the the. The table. I mostly. think it was Kellogg Hubbard's was the matrix. Oh, okay. Like the grid. Yep. Okay. Right. So in rural Vermont, it was already practicing soci sociocracy. And so um, one of the asks of Christopher was, is it possible to, to take whatever product you all come up with or we come up with and make it visually appealing in that way, which I'm happy to do, mm -hmm. um, but it it's we're not at that stage yet. Yeah, no, I just... Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think see what the middle product looks like. Well, and I think that the, I think, you know, obviously my graphics graphics tonight are quite simple, but I actually think less is more. It's really helpful to be succinct and have clarity. Um, and that's the other, the other thing that we did at the retreat was to, was I, I was coaching heavily that you not extend this timeline too far, that there's a lot, there's actually a fair amount of transition happening uh, within <laughs> The organization and to give that um give that time to mature and then see where you are in 18 or 24 months so but but david i think in terms of a final product what i've seen what i've heard staff asking for is almost a one pager yeah. right it needs to be that tight mm -hmm. that if it's on one page any one of you can talk off of it to a constituent right within your within your group etc okay thanks Christopher, is that uh, do, have I done justice to some of the conversations you're having? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that that's yeah, that's the the dream. I don't know that you know <laughs> one one will get to that point because that's also a, a great selling document that we can share with. Uh, yes, for sure. Yeah, just having one page. Okay. With a lot of information packed in. <laughs> Well, I think that, I think if you worked on it together, uh, you can have a lot of shared understanding, and then 
the one page can be more spare because you've done the work collectively and you don't need to be explaining it. Right. And I'll, and I think that's something I could probably design myself. Um, but I think uh, it's a matter of like how we get and how, or, or like when we know we're ready to like, you know, to, to put it to the presses or whatever. Yep. Okay. Any other, uh, you know, from the board, any other questions or reflections? Uh, this is CJ. Obviously, I was I was the missing person. My only so this looks um, looking at the plan and uh, with appreciation. This this is a thought, and it's I'm bringing this from some of the other organizations I'm involved with. I see a lot of investment in, you know, youth this, youth that, which is great. The knowledge of the elderly and the experience of the elderly is being lost in droves. And we are one of the places that could capture it. And on some of the other organizations I'm with, older people are some of our best volunteers and most active people. Sometimes they have more time and incredible knowledge and energy. So just something to see if, uh, if without ex overextending, whether uh, the, the youth media programs, especially if the programs can be similar enough to not overstress the staff, um, look at an old, an elder, an older media, elder media program um, specifically targeted at capturing and recording some of this uh, this knowledge and, and experience that's going away. That's it. Interesting. I think that we did have discussions in the uh, outreach group about getting in touch with the senior center, the Montpelier Senior Center um, as as one idea along those lines but that's absolutely true sure and i'll add that we definitely work closely with the montpelier senior activity center already and you know we support them in a number of ways with virtually every event that they do put on and and i think that um we yeah we could always do more to bring them into our space i'm mm -hmm. actually looking at them as media as content creators which is something mm -hmm. that is a little different than covering the senior center events. Um, so, so I would, and I, could, would caution, I would caution us uh, to avoid actually doing strategic planning at at the end of a of a I board agree. meeting. Let's <laughs> leave these discussions for that January circle we've already identified. As Absolutely, the place where we're going to move the ball next. But thank and you. This for is where we pay you the big bucks, Mike. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just you know trying to respect You're absolutely right time and we've and we've uh, thank you for getting that on the table we'll make sure it it, it gets um you know you. talk through more robustly in a, in a more appropriate form which we've already designated um do you expect co-directors to outreach and uh, they'll have a proposed meeting time in january february we're locked for uh the 27th fourth tuesday cj which circle are you part of on the board Jen, you moved me someplace uh, that you needed more people, <laughs> and, but you have not seen as much um, participation due to the fact that some stuff came up and I've been slammed. Uh, Jen, do you remember where you ended up sticking me? I think I started out as something like policy and you moved me someplace else. I feel like, and I'd have to just double check, but I think you started off in policy and we may have moved you to outreach, but or it may have been outreach to policy. So I, I, I can't think it was policy. outreach to policy, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, it is outreach to policy. I do know that because we were, yeah. And yeah, they we kicked me out. They kicked me out of outreach. <laughs> well, the, but there's, I think I think that was because Rachel left. You offered to join, but if your heart's in outreach and the senior center stuff would be an outreach, I mean, it's with the expanded board. It's not. It's not so much as a, of a triage thing as it was. Go ahead, Nathan. Well, the reason I, I raised it is, you know, Jen had pointed out we didn't have a lot of time to. Uh, for the whole group to interact around some of these ideas. And 
Um, just because you happen to be in an outreach circle and doing that work as your main focus doesn't mean you can't send suggestions or have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody in another circle. In fact, that's going to be really productive. And if you can do that in your off month, in addition to doing your own circle work, the conversation you have in February will be even more productive and efficient. So I, I appreciate CJ, uh, you raising that idea. Uh, although I agree with, with Michael, we probably don't have time to explore all of that, but I think that I want to, in case you needed permission, I want to give everybody permission to reach outside the, the circle that they're operating in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The circles are not silos. Good point. And I'm sorry to also add a side note, but I would love to say that, you know, just like what Palin is doing with taking on, uh, you know, a special interest and making a, 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 a show as a community producer who happens to also be a board member, um, anybody's welcome to do that. I think that like that's that kind of relates to the capacity issue that Nathan brought up. It's like if you have a great idea and you want to coordinate and organize it, please, you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, yeah. And so you know, CJ, thank you. OK, I, I think that's all for me. And you are our final agenda item. Um, so with uh, clarity on January and February, I do believe um, we're at the point of adjournment. And uh, we, we don't, it's February 27th, right? Fourth Tuesday, back to the fourth Tuesday, yes. All right, good. And expect outreach from uh, the co-director of your circle for a January. I will move to adjourn. It has so been moved at uh, 8.13. By acclamation, you bet. All righty, um, that was we got a lot done. A budget approved, uh, clarity on the next step for strategic planning, and uh, the the uh, that new that new account is 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 going to get launched. Uh, great. Um, yeah, here's to here's to twenty four coming up, and enjoy all your holidays. See you all. Take care. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye.